Hello everybody, Dieter Bone here for WM Experts and the 2008 Smartphone Round Robin. As you can see, this week we are working with the iPhone 3G and you know, boy, there's not much to say that hasn't already been said about the iPhone 3G, so we're going to try and take a look at it uh, from a Round Robin perspective, from a Windows Mobile perspective. I'm going around the device here, things that have changed, the flush headphone jack, the louder speaker, the plastic back, of course there's 3G and GPS and the most important change is look at all the applications I have managed to install in this thing lots of new applications for the iPhone 3G makes it a true smartphone whereas if I had had the guts to say it last year I would have said that the iPhone didn't technically count as a smartphone last year because it was just a, a super powerful feature phone because it didn't have all of these third-party applications to work with of course, the uh, the more things change, the more things stay the same. And uh, Safari on the iPhone is still, uh, in my opinion, the best mobile browser available today, bar none. That includes um, going after uh, certain browsers on Windows Mobile. The Windows Mobile is really catching up. We just posted uh, on Wednesday that uh, Skyfire has been updated and it supports full f uh, flash video and audio. And it's actually a very quality browser. But uh, if you're looking at browsers that work directly on the device without a proxy server, you still can't beat Safari. I mean, it renders the page quickly. This is over 3G. And it, um, you know, it still has, you know, these two different views. You can turn the phone on its side to rotate it and so on. Um, just a, it's just a great browser. And I'm still very jealous of it. You can see here we're <laughs> making fun of a 2.2 on the iPhone, which is the uh, operating system that I'm using here now, uh, which is actually kind of limiting because there's some, some issues there about Apple keeping you from being able to do stuff. And I had it jailbroken previously, but we'll get into that a little bit more in the full review. I've got a lot to say about that from a Windows mobile perspective. Um, of course, the, the browser or the uh, iPod here is uh, also very good. And you can see here it, uh, it shows video very well. Just Rented a movie off of iTunes, which was very convenient for the plane ride, and it uh, worked for 24 hours, and it was uh, easy to do, seamless, and uh, video looks good. So, again, the iPhone still beats every other smartphone out there at media capabilities, with the exception of podcasting, however. Um, email client, I have the same problems uh, as a power email user that I had last year. Namely, um, there's a little bit of speed, because you open it up and it starts you know, needing to load everything, but just... Moving through emails is um, sometimes tedious. If you're in one email box, uh, it's fine. Here you can see it shows uh, photo attachments in line, which is pretty nice. And it renders HTML email very, very well. But And you can see here also uh, lets me file. But um, to really power through emails in multiple folders and the way I do email, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, a lot of taps to switch between email boxes. And that can get pretty aggravating after a while so i i do hope i do wish they would fix that i wish that they would allow third-party developers to create an email app that's better for me as a power user to be quite honest but that's a limitation apple's not going to change sms is threaded as it should be and uh it used to take a really long time to open up but uh, since 2.2 they've really fixed that it seems to go quite a bit faster and uh, another thing that I don't like is the lack of background uh, processes. So certain applications will work in the background, certain ones won't. So I just pointed at Pandora there, great radio app, uh, just starting to be available on Windows Mobile, but it doesn't work uh, in the background, which is annoying. Uh, Maps has also seen a huge improvement. You can see here there is uh, my GPS location. Even though I'm inside, they've added full GPS. And if you don't have GPS, you can get uh, core location to work. So you can get your uh, tower-based location. And uh, you can see I'm zooming out here, showing you where I am right now, Wichita, visiting the family. It would be nice if there was turn-by-turn -turn driving directions as long as I'm uh, talking on the subject, uh, but it uh, doesn't really work very well in Google Maps. And uh, it doesn't look like we have got anything coming down the pike. And so again, I'm going to harp on the fact that the iPhone is still a relatively closed platform relative. Uh, but there are a ton of applications, despite that platform being relatively closed. As you can see here, just I've got a ton of games. Games are really easy to download, really easy to install, fun to play. And the games uh, range from pretty simple to incredibly good and professional and immersive. So here is uh, the iPhone version of The Force Unleashed. And I just want to show you some of the graphics and whatnot here. And uh, it's been a while since I've played this, and so probably not going to be able to get you to show you the actual gameplay. But... 
you can see here it's a very professional game they uh, they make very good use of the, the screen and a lot of these games are, are doing that and so the iPhone has got some support from really big development houses like EA and so that's uh, that's an advantage it's got over Windows Mobile at least for now uh, we'll see what happens when uh, when Microsoft starts getting to later versions of Windows Mobile but for now you know there's Spore there's the Force Unleashed there's a lot of big names uh, available on the iPhone that aren't showing up on Windows Mobile yet and of course I have to give huge kudos to the iPhone for its application and installation system despite my complaints that it's uh, relatively closed and it's arbitrary and you don't know if Apple's gonna let you get your app on or not um, you know installing is a breeze uh, checking for updates is automatic and simple and works very well uh, with the newer versions of the firmware with 2.2 uh, there's no problems installing it on device like there used to be the phone app is still uh, you know just like the old school phone app but you know I gotta complain here look at um, trying to search on Windows Mobile see I'm trying to get to the search bar at the top uh, you know and it's just tough there it is here we go Windows Mobile uh, on the home screen or go into the phone app you just start typing somebody's name just boom and up they pop and that's it and it, it literally takes less than two seconds to get to anybody in my gigantic contact list and here on the iPhone you can see to get to me it took boy I don't know 10 seconds 15 seconds and that's just not feasible if you're trying to get a whole you know dial somebody if you're in the car or you know just trying to get a quick message to somebody and as you can see here since I sync with Gmail and they you know they've got a ton of contacts that they sync they basically sync everybody uh, you know, I've got a huge, huge, huge list of contacts here, and it just trying to get a hold of any particular person is really tough. Even with some of the shortcuts that they've included, it's still nowhere near uh, where a modern phone should be. I should be able to get a hold of somebody just instantaneously. Another complaint that I still have is that ringer switch there. Uh, you can see I've set it on silent, uh, and despite that, if I were to go and play a podcast here, it's going to play through the speakers. Now I understand that there's two different philosophies about what the silent button should do, and if I go in and start, a, you know, a podcast or music, that you know I do want to hear it. But uh, my opinion is that silent should be silent. You can see I got a pop-up notification there for SMS. That's pretty nice. Um, so is this pop-up thing for controlling the iPod. So that's cool. There's a lot of little shortcuts that they've added, and I imagine more of those are going to happen over time. Um, but it's still, uh, I can't navigate as quickly. My complaints about the BlackBerry, about not having enough shortcut buttons, definitely apply to the iPhone. Um, in general, my, my basic take is that the iPhone requires immersion. Kevin, in his review of the Trio Pro, said there's two kinds of phones. There's uh, on-the-go phones and there's stop-and-use phones. And he called the Trio Pro a stop-and-use phone, but I find it a great on-the-go phone. I'm able to get things done very quickly with one hand on it. But the iPhone is the, the perfect example of a stop and use phone. You really need to stop and look at what you're doing and wait for the transitions to happen and so on. Um, here's the uh, Notes app, and I'm jumping around here a bit, but I apologize. But I wanted to show the keyboard and give the iPhone kudos again for having still probably one of the best uh, software keyboards available. There are some great third-party ones, and HTC's made a lot of progress with their keyboards. But uh, this keyboard is still better to use on screen than any other on screen keyboard that I've used when I'm totally honest with myself. Um, I mean, I do prefer the landscape keyboard and SPB full screen and some of the, the sure type stuff to, for getting things done relatively quickly. But if you're looking for full on QWERTY and interacting with the screen, the iPhone's keyboard is still very, very good. So uh, I'm giving the iPhone a lot of praise here, but I, I have a lot of things to complain about, and I've, I've given some hints about that. The, the lack of speed the lack of um, being able to use it uh, on the go, you know, with only half my attention, um, and uh, the closed platform, the fact that it's, you never know if you're going to get an app on and what apps are allowed to do or not allowed to do. Uh, on the other hand, they do have full uh, support for Exchange. It's not quite as robust as uh, Windows Mobile, but it's there, and so it, uh, it is a serious contender for taking away some business market share from Microsoft. Much more to come. Stay tuned.